just on your go. You'll just say your spiel, say welcome to Black and a Berry. Then I'll do the intro, introduce all of us. I'm gonna give you a badass introduction. Um, something else as well too. Um, when I say low security applause, don't worry about it. It's gonna get it's gonna get um, edited in. All right. So you're not gonna hear it now, but you're gonna hear it later when we when um, in post. Once we'll, still, we'll, still, we'll, we'll, still, we'll still cheer for you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still gonna cheer. So like, yeah, it's gonna be a whole thing. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, you're cute, big dog. All right, guys. What's up, everybody? This is Bobby Thompson. I am the 2019 Amateur Arnold World Strongman Champion, and this is Blacker the Berry. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. Fire. Oh, shit. We got another fitness, and we got another one of these crazy strong motherfuckers in the building. Listen, I am Dean. That right over there is the madman, Los. And listen, we have a proper professional strong man gracing our presence this fine yeah. evening. The definition, yeah. I would say, of hard work, grit, blood, sweat, and tears, and his journey hasn't even begun. As he yeah. said earlier, he's a 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic winner. He has competed yeah. in Giants Live North America 2019. He plays fourth. Plays fourth right after oh. went, right after winning his his pro card. Then after oh. that he goes and competes at the heaviest competition known to man, and he plays ninth once again right after getting his pro card. Listen, coming from West Virginia, the man with the beard, Bobby Big Hoss Thompson. Los, cue that fucking applause. Ah, ah, we love you, yeah, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. We love you, Bobby. We love you, Bobby. <laughs> What's up, big dog? How you feeling? Man, I'm doing great, y'all. How about you? I can't call it moving and grooving, grooving and moving. What Listen, I'm know? excited. I'm excited to have another uh, strong man contestant. This is like our first, or like our, we're get, we're diving in for me at least. We're diving into the 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 sport, the culture. So I'm like like a sponge. He's the, he's the well. First of all, let's 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 we gotta we gonna we gonna have to give him a little bit of clout here. You know, Mr. Thompson is our first American strong man who has come oh. to Black of the Berry. We have not That's had enough. We listen, we he is purebred American, y'all. And if y'all yeah. listen to the show, y'all know I always speak about this shit. I bleed red, white, and blue no matter what. Because guess what? Yeah. I'm here, motherfuckers. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. So listen, yo, Home big lows. Wait, time out, time out. Can we just talk about how your name now has changed to Junior Strongman? What the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, yeah. So every yeah. episode, Los's name changes. <laughs> so we had Andrea on. Who were you? The fitness god? What were you? Yeah. <laughs> fitness, fitness, slash sex, fitness slash sex guru. And now I am. Uh, You're a Junior junior's Strongman yeah. at 220 oh, yeah. pounds. <laughs> He's got to yeah. compete now. You got to yeah, compete yeah. now. I need to listen. Th- All shoulders, though. No, no legs. <laughs> hey, man, we need to make it work. There's a weight class for everybody. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. something for everyone. Yeah. But you despite know the, what? Despite the large T, I'm a 220. Yeah. You, know? you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> listen. We're definitely gonna get back to your strong man journey, Lowe's. But I want to yeah. talk about Bobby's right now. Now, yeah. now, now, here's the thing, people. We here at Black and the Bear, you know us. We like to give y'all compelling and some really good interviews. And we are going to do something a little bit different for y'all. The same way WWE is doing cinematic matches, we're going to do a cinematic interview, people. We're going to take you Ooh. on this long journey. Yeah, yeah. We're going to go on this journey with y'all. And this the is going to be... The valleys. The peaks and valleys. This is something that you can... They need to make this into a Disney fucking movie. They may not because I'm cursing. But make it into a motherfucking Disney movie, people. Why, why no. Disney? Why Disney? You because Disney went. always has like good endings. You could tell this was going to be hell of a fucking good ending. If he fucking okay. has just won a strong... He just won his pro card and then he's placing fourth in the North American show and then ninth at the heaviest show in the world. Does that make him the ninth strongest man in the world? We'll find out later. So listen, Bobby. We know... We know... <laughs> We know that before fucking the pandemic took us to, you know, to hell in the hand bastard, this fucking dirty bitch called COVID. Um, we know that you last competed at the Armstrong Man Classic and you placed ninth. Now, massive respects to that, but we're going to take it all the way back. So I want to know, and, you know, I don't know if some of the people know, but I want you to explain to them, how is it that a bet between few friends have landed you here? Can you talk about how you even got into Strong Man? What, what was this bet? Talk to us, please. So, man, you know, it, at the time, I was a personal trainer at a gym, and I, I was kind of lost in competing. I hadn't really done – I have been competing in powerlifting for years, but there was a break there where I really wasn't doing anything. 
and I was kind of lost, and a group of guys walked up. And I'd known them kind of, but we weren't super tight then. And they were like, hey, you know, we're here pretty strong, and have you thought about doing strongman? And at the time, I had a beard, so everybody assumes if you're strong with a beard, you do strongman. I don't know why. It's kind of like all big white guys look alike or something. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Either that or right. Yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, so, no, were, we talked it up, and all three of us decided to enter. And um, I was actually it worked out in my favor because my coach now was a member at my gym, but he was kind of the guy that nobody talked to because he looked really scary. Um, I hear you. I even, hear you. Yeah, even to me, man, like, dude, covered in tattoos, like, chest to knuckles, would show up on his tarly and his biker boots, works out in his jeans and steel toes, like – just one of those guys you left alone, but uh, this, sounds this like a good dude. Thing, Look, I like him. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, I love right? his spirit. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So Earth he is got he got win that I was starting to compete, and then we had a mutual friend, and uh, he approached me and was like, "Hey, let me give you some tips," and he gave me some tips, and that led to me actually winning that real small competition in Richmond. Um, small enough that he says it doesn't count. <laughs> but, uh, Still counts for you, though. Up. Yeah, right. So my buddies and I, we all went. We actually all won our weight classes. They were they were a little bit smaller than me, and uh, he had given me his phone number. And he's like, "Hey, go ahead and hit me up when you get back in town. Let me know how it went." And I told him, told him the weights, and he laughed at me. And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "That don't count." And he's like, "But then he asked me if I wanted to do this for real," and I said, "Yeah, like I'm I'm in." And he's like, "Cool, I'm gonna coach you." Uh, he's like, get ready to train at 6 a.m. And now get ready to train at 6 a.m. meant my first workout was at 6 a.m. He mm. didn't show up until noon on his lunch break when we worked out the second time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you were living that kind of life. So you were pulling two a days. Okay, hold on. Let's yeah. hold on. Before we even break into that, I want to, you, you, you just kind of glossed over something I definitely want to get into. So, how long were you powerlifting for, my good brother? That that even goes farther back, man. Um, so I started powerlifting when I was 16 or 17 because I got injured and couldn't play football anymore. Mm. Um, yeah, before I was 17, I'd had four foot surgeries total, two bone fusions and two screws in each foot. And the doctor yeah. told me that I wasn't allowed – I couldn't run anymore and no doctor would ever clear me to run. So that meant high school sports were out. So here I was, a big kid, I was strong, and I mean, I wanted to go to college to play football. That's what I wanted to do. And, you know, I was a sophomore, and all of a sudden that was no longer an option. So at 16 and a half, 17, I found powerlifting, and then I did that until I was about 18, and then powerlifting just got boring. It's the same three lifts over <laughs> and over again, man. I couldn't do it. <laughs> then squat and deadlift, you just wasn't. <laughs> Nah, man. Like, I hated the bench to begin with. Like, it just wasn't for me. Well, hold on. I, it's funny because I just feel like I've recently seen you do a video, and it's definitely within this past year, mm -hmm. where you were on the axle bar benching 503 pounds or something, 505 pounds. So for someone to say that they don't – and the axle bar isn't even a fucking Olympic bar. So for someone to say that they don't like benching. <laughs> I hate bench press. I hate it with a passion. He's not even doing the regular bar. He's doing 503 pounds. Listen, do y'all understand the people we are bringing to y'all? Do you understand the vast amount of diversity we are bringing to y'all? Y'all got to, listen, motherfuckers. You know what? It don't matter. Y'all going to appreciate it one day. Listen, back to you, Bobby. Oh, before... 500 pounds? 500? That means oh, that like if you... Yeah, go ahead. Axle bar. The axle bar. It's Remember, Lowe's, this isn't the bar that we use when we were playing ball and lifting. Right. This right. is some... Big ass shit that like I probably couldn't even grip because my hands aren't that big. You know what I mean? Like you probably couldn't even grip it. Like it's a fucking weird. It's a fucking. It's a contraption. It's, it's like, like a pipe. Basically, it's it's a fucking. It's a like say that one more time, Bobby. It's like it's about the size of a soda can. They're like they're roughly two inches in diameter. <laughs> 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 Five hundred. <laughs> you look at so him, how much? How much is the? How much is the? Carry the one. <laughs> <laughs> carry the one. Like it's a lot. It's a, it's 
a lot of weight. <laughs> man, it, I don't know. See, this is why it says Junior next to my name. You okay? Because I think <laughs> you haven't got there yet. No, I'm not. I'm not on the. I'm the novice level. Um, you're not proper. You're not proper. It's cool. It's no, cool. Not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. So I'm. I'm interested in in like the the first competition. So mm-hmm. that. So after. So after that regional, we don't. We, do you count? We don't count that, or we're gonna count that. I'm counting it. I don't give a fuck. It's a story, yeah. so let's count it. It's a story, yeah, okay. so let's count it. Right. So let's count it. All right. So then after that one, how'd you feel like you felt like you were, you know, you got a little bit of buzz behind you because you won locally and regionally? You're like, yeah. And then you're like, now I'm going to get ready to dive in. Well, so that, the way Strongman at the time worked was that wasn't even like a regional competition. It was local. So that oh, no okay. one even knew that competition was a thing. Um, oh, okay. That was what's called a level one, which basically mm-hmm. meant that everybody in their weight class who took first place got an invite to nationals. Mm-hmm. But when you go to nationals, there's like 40 or 50 guys in a weight class. Like right. there's that many competitors per weight class. So after I won that one, I was impressed with myself. Um, I mean, but I was and I wasn't because how easy it was. Right. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I walked right through it. I won four out of five events. You know, I with what I didn't have half the, what's up? I said, well, um, um can you could you tell the people what the events were? Oh geez, the events were there was a tire flip, which I did not do well on. Um, I'd never flipped a tire before. So I was kinda like, okay, well we're gonna try this and then go with that. <laughs> <laughs> then there was a there was an axle clean and press and a keg press medley, which yeah. I won that event. There was a farmer's carry, which somehow won that event because I'm I'm slow, man. Like I'm slow as hell. It's sad. Like it's, <laughs> I'm slow as fuck. Um, <laughs> and then there was a, there was a deadlift event, which I did. I won that with my. You had three attempts to hit your heaviest deadlift, and my first deadlift won that whole event. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's a cool off. Yeah, that was. <laughs> yeah, they, they told me. I, they, they told me I didn't have to do the second, and third one if I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm here. I'm, I'm gonna do this. What, what, what was the what was the weight? It, so it was an 18 inch tire deadlift. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Basically means that you have t- you have truck tires on the side of the barbell, and the bar actually starts 18 inches off the ground. So it mm. looks like a circus lift. It's not like a normal deadlift. But my mm. opener for that was like. 750 pounds, I think. Okay. okay. Casual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A casual 750. For me, then it was. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> so, so it's safe to say oh, this, God, this first attempt, was... you just won because you were just brute strength. And you're just like, oh, I'm going to pick this up. You know, and you didn't have the real technique as of yet? Well, no. So when it came to anything deadlift, I've always been good at deadlift. Right. So when it comes to that event, like, I had an idea what I needed to do. I'm like, okay, yeah. like, I mean, I was competitive powerlifter for years. Like, I know what this is. This I'm going to do well at. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that one I really wasn't – I mean, there's there's limited technique to an 18-inch deadlift. I mean, <laughs> it's it, – it really, it's so high off the ground. It's almost – depending on how short you are, it may be right above your knees. Jesus. So it, it's basically one of those things that looks really cool to the crowd. But as far as skill goes, it doesn't require that much. Okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, so I mean, strongman is a spectator sport. That's what most people forget. So, yeah, I mean, that's why you see a lot of the really weird implements. But those are, I want to say, those are all the events I remember. Um, that okay. was that was years ago. Though. That was four years ago. Jesus. But yeah, like wait, I said, wait, those wait, were, wait. You said that was four years ago. Roughly four years ago. Yeah. Time out. 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 Hold on. Hold on. What's hold the, on. What's the time out? What's up? Hold on. Hold on, we gotta we gotta take a pause. People what happened? understand. He's four years ago. Four that's four years ago. That's like somebody going to high school, somebody going to college, and he is now arguably the ninth strongest man in the world because he placed ninth at the Arnold. That's the heaviest event. It's right. stronger than the it's stronger than the world's strongest man. He had right. a seven hundred, roughly like he said, like seven hundred and fifty pound deadlift at that time. And then he did nine, what was it, nine twenty six at the at the Arnold's? So those were two different deadlifts. The nine. Oh yes. Yeah. So the eighteen-inch deadlift. So it, to give you some spectrum, later on down the road, qualifying for Amateur Worlds, I did a one thousand fifteen eighteen-inch deadlift. Mm. 
then at the Arnold the following year, or excuse me, two years after that is when I pulled 926 from floor height at the, at which at the, was far below my capability. Well, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into that competition. Yeah, we were definitely going to get there. So you know what? Let's, uh, I close. I can't, I can't. Can. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. Yeah, son. He's another so one who could just rip yeah, somebody like, in half if he wants to. Yeah, like, just how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you just walk around like you just that strong? Like, and, and, and like, I think like, because let me tell you something, like, sometimes you pick things up and you notice how heavy it is. Like, just in everyday life, you know, you're carrying a water jug, like, oh, this is a little heavy. Ain't shit really heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't shit really, like, if your car, your car's in neutral, you're like, oh, I got like, oh, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, goddamn. <laughs> it's like, how do you? How do you, Los, how do you, is, how, Los is fascinated with the idea that y'all are basically, because to be honest with you, if we want to be, the, the one thing that, and the reason why I'm fascinated with Strongman, the reason I've gotten into it um, so heavy, and my training style is like that, but I'm not going to try to ever compete on y'all level, just just kind of keeping it to like my own, yeah, nah, I'm not doing none of that, I'm good on that. Just want to kind of, just for my own sake, especially for my new profession, but um, it's interesting that y'all are basically close to like modern day supermen and women when you think about yeah. y'all and high level and high level jujitsu artists and high level martial artists like y'all are not like natural you know what i'm saying what i mean by that is like there's something else like michael jordan is not natural like he's not a human compared to me like i'm human he's right. human but he's a different kind of human like, right. you know what i mean like like it's a different kind of just it's walk, a different just kind of like that just like, like, yeah, like, like, like Jordan walks around, like at the drop of a dime, I could just take over something if I wanted to, or even like how, like we have Navy SEALs who are trained and they're walking around like I'm superhuman because if I wanted to, I could take over this whole, na like, excuse me, this whole nation, this whole little town before anybody even knew, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all have these different capabilities. So like to Los's, to Los's point, how do you just walk around with this massive, like, like, like you just know it's going to take a lot more than anything average and something <laughs> exceptional to stop you. Like, how, like, what does that do for your psyche? It, it, when I first got started, I, I felt like Superman. I did. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm lucky because I've grown up around some exceptional men. And ever since a young man, I've always had very strong male figures in my life. Um, they may not have been my father at the time when he was deployed. Sometimes they were different guys, but I've never had a problem being humble. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that simply does. And I think a lot of the guys, most of us are very humble. Like there's not even uh, Martins, for instance, who is the current world's strongest Martins! man. Martins! Sorry, Dude, I, had to, I, had to, I had to do the Martins. <laughs> it's his trademark. But even guys <laughs> like that, they are incredibly humble. And I think it's because we hold ourselves to a standard physically and competitively that we're never going to achieve. So mm. I, for instance, I guarantee you Martins, when he won world's strongest man, the moment he stepped off that podium, he was thinking about next year. Mm. He, yeah, it, that it doesn't stay fresh with us like that. It doesn't. Mm. Granted, I've never won the world's strongest man, but that's one thing I have noticed is the wins don't stay fresh. So they, they you're like, in the constant, the constant pursuit of the next one. Exactly. And it's, it's both positive and negative. Like it, it truly is. It's very damaging to the psyche, but on the other hand, it gives us the ability to do fantastic things in any aspect of life we choose, we choose to pursue. Yeah. That's like some Bill Belichick shit right there, man. Like you win a championship, you're like, ah. <laughs> uh, <It's> a, um, <laughs> but that's the way you got to be. Yeah. Especially, yeah. yeah, definitely not. Definitely, especially in your competition and, well, so we, we can kind of relate to it, <coughs> excuse me, to a degree. When it comes to the podcast, we're never fucking satisfied. You know, we of may course. be happy with something small, but it's always like, ah, we could have did this. Ah, we should have did that. Or we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. So it's, a, it's all relative, you know what I mean? They just yeah, happen yeah, to be yeah. superhuman. Like, like I, really, I really do look at, like, strong men, like, high Olympic athletes. Like, they're just, yeah, this, you know what I mean? Like, high level, like, you know, sports athletes. It's just, like, you know, even high level scientists and hot, like, like, battle tactics. Like, there's something... That's like that's something different, you know what I mean? Like, like, like you gotta be, like, yeah. <laughs> you gotta want to yeah. go somewhere. But yeah, I don't want to say I don't want to say that and offend you, but uh, yeah, there's something definitely wrong with y'all. 
Oh, you no, know what, there's, there's, some, there's some stupid shit happening up in here all the time. It's cool. <laughs> I get to listen to those voices all day. <laughs> well, you know what, though? You know, I do want to know. Hold on. Oh, my bad, Los. The one thing I do want to know is when did you stop taking strong man as a hobby and started taking it more serious, even during the amateur level? Because you kind of, when I look at the trajectory, you kind of came up really fast, in my opinion. It may not be fast to other people's eyes, but from where you were to where you are now, you, you're definitely, you definitely putting that work in. So, yeah, that's, that goes back a ways again. I, I can, I can remember being in the seventh grade and telling my math class that I was going to be the world's strongest man at one point in time in my life. Bear in mind, in the seventh grade, I didn't know what that meant. I just knew I was stronger and that's what I wanted to do. And then I went to the Arnold Classic as a spectator two years in a row. And my second year I left, I said, I'm not coming back until I'm competing. And then years later, I qualified for Amateur Worlds. But as far as when it became serious, it was never, it was never something I took lightly. I'm, I'm somewhat of an extreme personality in the sense that when I focus in on something, that is it. That is what I'm doing. Um, but after I won that first competition, my coach asked me, he's like, do you want to do this for real? And we sat down and plotted every single competition we were going to do, not just to do a competition, but that was a step to something else to get me to where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So if, if there never was a hobby, I was, I mean, it's, <laughs> I was always focused on that. That always had 100% of my attention, the eating, the lifestyle, the recovery, you know, having to make extra money so I could afford the food or so I could buy my supportive gear. Like it's like my knee sleeps and everything. There, there never was a time to where it was just a hobby for me. Mm. Mm. I got a, I got a question for you. Um, just a little slight fast forward. Um, so in the term, in terms of competing and now that you're, you know, you're, you're rising in terms of the tier and notoriety and stuff like that. How do you feel, like I know Strongman, ha I, what I've learned is that Strongman is very community oriented. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of competitively, how do you feel, do you feel like there's like a chip on your shoulder? You know, my thing is that um, me and Dean were talking about some of these guys that are like massive. Like, don't get me wrong, you're a giant. But like, yeah. ma like massive. We're talking like six, seven, almost 500 pounds. You know, so <laughs> not five hundred pounds. <laughs> Thor was six nine four forty. Brian's like six eight. That's, Florence that's and James. You got Obers, who's a big boy. <laughs> nonetheless, 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 giant, <laughs> giant, giant. It's like, do you feel like sometimes when you, when you, <clears throat> uh, when you see these kind of things, you're like, that kind of makes you. It gives you like you get a chip on your shoulder, kind of like even if it's not really there, you kind of use it for fuel. Like you're the underdog, and you're like, you know, you got to go against everybody else. So like, speak to that. So I, I don't think I come into it with a chip on my shoulder. Um, I mean, I do – how can I explain that one? No, I, I got to say, man, I, I've never had a chip on my shoulder. I've never looked at those guys and seen them. Obviously, they're, they're going to be a challenge, and I accept that they're going to have advantages due to their height that I don't. Right. But it's never a chip, and that fuels me. It's more directed towards strategy. <clears throat> like, like, for instance, with Thor um, – I knew right away that in the events, unfortunately, I didn't get to showcase this, but if I had had an event like a log press or an axle clean and press event, that was where I had to beat Thor because stabilizing heavy weights overhead is a weak point of mm. Like I knew that, but I, all, I knew I wasn't ever going to out deadlift him, but mm. I knew that I, if I was going to out deadlift somebody, it would have to be, say, Jerry Pritchett. I'd have to get close yeah. or beat him. He's a great deadlifter, mm -hmm. but he can't overhead. So if I can mm -hmm. get close to beating Jerry – and then beat Thor, those are points, and that's that's how your mind has to work. Right. Guys that like come into the sport with a chip on their shoulder, they don't make it. Mm. They, they don't. I mean, it's in a perfect example for that is Rob Kearney. I mean, he's 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 like brother. I'm sort of hate this, but he's tiny. Like Rob's a yeah, little yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah he's but, like what five ten, right? Like only like yeah, two, he's like five ten. Sub, he's sub three hundred pounds, and oh. he doesn't want to be three hundred pounds. He doesn't want to be that. But I guarantee you, Rob doesn't look to that chip on his shoulder if he has one for fuel. No, instead, he's doing what I just said. He's picking us apart. He's, okay, right. how can I beat these guys? Who do I need to be here? 
He's playing the poker mm. game. Mm. Yeah, he is and, a he he is another savage. He has the American log record lows. He's another do, do you, fucking bad you, man. Does yeah, that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very bad man. <laughs> because to me personally, like I feel like in a competition, I would want to know, like to your point, like I want to know all the other competitors' uh, strong points and weaknesses, so I know that you know. I would. I mean, obviously, you yeah, you can play advantages, but that means nothing. But do you, do you see a lot of other uh, competitive, um, like other contests? You know, people, other people that you go against the event. I'm throwing on the word here, but other people you go against in the, in the events. Do you see them like uh, strategizing and looking at the game film of their competitors, fellow competitors? Oh, we all do it. Okay. We we all do it. One hundred percent. Um. Well, I say we all do it. I obviously think that, like, Thor probably wasn't concerning himself with it too much. Mm -hmm. um, only because if you look at this past year's Arnold, there was really only one threat to Thor, and that was Mateusz Kielskowski. Um, But even he's, then... He's a fucking... He's a fucking... Use a motherfucker, yeah. Mateusz. Yeah. One day we're going to have but, you on here, too, but use a, he's a motherfucker. But, but <laughs> no, like... I, I guarantee you we all look at game film, but I think the amount of game film we look at is what changes. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like Thor can say, What's up? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was like, Thor's going to say, okay, this is the one guy that can probably beat me if I'm healthy. This is the guy I'm going to worry about. Guys like myself, I'm going to know everybody's shoe size and what kind of toothpaste. <laughs> uh, toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a... <clears throat> when you came out, I ain't gonna lie, when you came out, I was watching in the crib. And when you came out, I was like, yo, I said, he's a fucking unit. And this motherfucker look like he is not here to play with none of you. <laughs> like, he came out like, I had the flag flying. And then just had that, just went down the line, bumped everybody, just was like, all right. Let's do this. <laughs> I was like, I fuck with the energy. I said, I like the energy. He's like, he's like, I don't give a fuck about it. nothing else going on around me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Business time. I, I definitely appreciated that. But before we get there, people, because we had to give you another little teaser, because that's what we yeah. here. Yeah. I want to definitely know, how was it you, so if you wouldn't mind, you don't have to say what you're, you don't have to say what you were doing or what you are doing, but like, what was you can give like a broad description of like what was your profession? I know you were bouncing. Were you doing something else besides bouncing and then also training strongman? Oh, so when it all first started, I was a personal trainer and then I was bouncing. Um, I was at, I was working at the gym from geez. Uh, my first client was for the most part they started around seven a.m. My last one be over at eight. And then four nights of the week, I was also bouncing at a bar, which was right across the parking lot from the gym. And then I was actually running a nutrition store for a little while, uh, oh. kind of like a small business. It wasn't mine, but I was running the shop. I was general manager. And then I was still bouncing, but I cut my bouncing down to two nights a week because that job paid better. And then now, as of two and a half years ago, I actually work in the uh, logistics field for the Department of State. And I still mm. bounce, but a little bit less, so... Mm. Jesus. Yeah, so I've I've Jesus. always worked fifty or sixty hour weeks. Sheesh. So talk about that it, trying to trying to achieve the balance of working and trying to be uh, training and competing because I know and then you know rest and then also necessary. still be living your life too. Yeah, yeah. You still got other yeah. responsibilities. I don't know how deep you want to get into that, but you got other responsibilities. With people yeah, I mean, you well, you know, I, I so training is me living my life. Um, mm. that is me living my life, and I'm lucky that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm lucky, but I'm lucky in the sense of as far as my close-knit family goes, there's not that many people. So mm. having that works in my favor, but I also – I'm a dad. I mean, I've got a kid. Right. So that is – that's that's been a challenge, um, mm -hmm. but that's been really the biggest challenge. Working the hours wasn't hard. Training 20-plus hours a week when I'm tired wasn't hard. Um the but it was you know making sure i'm getting time with my daughter in that was the rough one um i really wish there was something magical i could tell you like as far as how i did it and oh i did it exactly right. this many hours here but man i just mm -hmm. made a decision i, I just said i was gonna it. do it and did it no That's i do respect it 
that's that's kind of but you know that's kind of it, it's still motivating in itself because you realize that you know you have all these things that you have to balance and at the end of the day you still got to come home and be a father you know like so it's like it's it's beautiful to actually hear that stuff because it's like some people Just feel bad it. because they feel like they're being selfish and even i think andrea said that right where she feels like she has when she locks into the gym she kind of feels selfish and it's like she's no you know, no no taking, not when she locks in but sometimes like you like like she sometimes she felt a little self and then she realized she had to be selfish because then if she was good, everybody else in the house was good. And yeah. same thing with him. If he's good, everybody else is going to be good. And that, that's yeah. the way it is. And you have to – I always knew that this was going to lead to opportunities for me. Um, mm. I always knew that this will make me money at some point. I may not be able to live off it, but it will be extra income at some point in time, which it turned into. Right. And – that money doesn't get turned around and spilled back out randomly. Like, no, it's, you know, it's putting money away from my daughter. It's buying her the thing she needs. So mm-hmm. you can, unfortunately you are going to give up time, but you, it's easier to justify it when you can say, I'm getting something from this. This okay. isn't, this isn't for nothing. So, so before we get into your diet real quick, cause I'm uh, Cause Dean is interested in that because you know, he's, he's, he's more of the junior strongman than I am. So uh, <laughs> I I want to get into you my kind of your, fucked up. He was he yeah. listen. He had did this post about fucking being responsible, and I was like, I hear you, Bobby. I'm responsible like seventy percent of the time, but other times it's like fuck it. Live my life. The much <laughs> <don't, laughs> you know I get you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I saw your post as I was eating, and I was like, I hear you, Bobby. I'm gonna still like it though, but it's cool. <laughs> so, I'm interested in the fact of like how does the whole monetization work? Is it kind of like how, like how golf is, where you kind of have a buy-in to the tournament, and then you get like a payout depending on how you place? So yes, however. Cash prizes for competitions are not very common. Um, okay. Like the Arnold is the Arnold, and then Sejourno Sabikis puts on a competition in Lithuania that I've done. Those are the only two competitions that, that if you are selected to come compete, you will make money no matter how you place. Now, um, obviously, if you take last, you'll make the least. You take first, you make the most. Right. But there's the Arnold, World Ultimate Strongman does one. And then Zajurna Savickis does one in Lithuania. But those are the only three shows, aside from a few others, and even in a few others, it's only the top three that make money. Right. But it's not enough to sustain you for a year. Right. Like, it doesn't – like, it's no, it's no secret, but uh, Thor at the Arnold, he walked with, like, $72,000. It's very – it's interesting when you think about how much money they really made off that competition. Because, like, I look at y'all like – so like, I'm a really, I'm really big into wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. And I really look at I look at strongman kind of like how the territories in wrestling used to be. So if anybody's a wrestling fan and they know like old school wrestling, they understand that wrestling used to have different territories and wrestlers used to go to these different territories, and that's how they would make their money because you would have the promoter putting on shows. Strongman really to me is kind of that same vein. Not to say that it's scripted, but what I'm saying is that there's different there's different federation for strongman to compete in. They go uh, on these different places, and then these different places use their name, their likeness, their feats of strength to put on these conversa- I mean, excuse me, to put on these massive shows. Mm-hmm. Like strongman shows have elevated now. Like they are filling out arenas. So you yes. think about it when wrestlers. So you had stars like Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and all these guys filling out arenas, mm-hmm. and they were making millions of dollars. Yeah. Filling out off like you know what I mean, making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of the arena shows alone. You see what I'm saying? So it's a conversation to be had, definitely in strongman when it comes to these guys getting paid. Mm. You know so what I'm saying? Because you're putting country, on these large shows, and then especially when you're streaming them. Come on, y'all. So yeah. that's why you have show companies like World Ultimate Strongman. So they do their shows like it's internationally. They don't have a US show. Um, like WS Dubai last year paid out at the highest total payout of any strongman competition. And it was, it was like half a mil, I think collectively was the amount of money they gave away. Um, Mm. but then if you go to places like the UK where you have like a lot of the giants live circuit, we have one here, which if you do well enough there, you make money, 
But if you go to UK over there in Britain and everywhere, they sell out arenas of 30,000 people because strongman there is like wrestling is here. Mm. They have, it's a spectator sports. So mm-hmm. if you have spectators, you have money. If you don't have spectators, there is no money. So we, we asked we asked Big Laws this question. Um, I'm interested in seeing what your response is. Do you think that strongman should have like a like a uh, overseeing organization, kind of just able to link these federations together? That way, maybe we can get more funding. It could be properly promoted and marketed. Do you think that would benefit? So I've got a yes and a no for you. Okay. Yes. I do because I would like to see a unified sports. Yeah. I would like, for instance, you know, we have the world's strongest man, which is a totally different style of competition than the Arnold. And you've mm-hmm. got two pools of people. Some people think the world's strongest man is the guy who wins that competition. Some guys think it's the person that wins the Arnold. You know, it's kind of like the heaviest like, competition. That's the heaviest yeah. competition, Bobby. What I'm supposed to think, Bobby. What I'm supposed to think. <laughs> Brian Shaw put it. Brian Shaw put it the best. He said the world's strongest athletes will win the world's strongest man. Now, if you look at this past year's Arnold, this was the most athletic Arnold Classic that has ever happened. Mm, okay, it truly was as far as yeah, the events yeah. that took place. Yeah. Those events are more fun to watch. They are. Not many people are going to get excited about seeing a last man standing deadlift event. I will. I loved when I used to see them die growing up. It hey, used to I'm be great watching y'all pass out. No offense, Bobby, but that, listen, I oh, love no. it. Because it lets it be, no, no, I've never seen you pass out, but like sometimes like when y'all are going so hard, what happened? No, 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 no. I didn't, I haven't, I haven't seen you pass out. Oh, God. Okay. No, 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 no. I have it. I have it. I have it. No, but no, I will, no, I will, no. I will, I will no, now got, dig deep. I will no, definitely dig deep it now. now. <laughs> We got to hear it now. He's living it. We got to hear it now, Bobby. Because wait, wait, wait. Because you definitely didn't pass it at the Arnold. You held strong. No, but I did at the Arnold. I did at the Arnold Amateur. Mm. On the death. No, it wasn't yeah. because. I somersaulted over the bar at the Arnold Amateur 2019 World Championship. Oh, the deadlift. I passed out mid-rep and somersaulted over the bar. I yes. won that event. But, Yeah. Oh, and that speaks to the humbleness like you get from the sport because this shit is dangerous. <laughs> like, you know, oh, what I'm no, saying? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, wow. this, this is, yeah, passing out is no big deal. That shit happens. Not you to wake see up. That. Wow, That's my bad. Crazy. I'm slipping on my pimp, and I don't know how I missed that one. That's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I've got the video. You got to dig on my Instagram, but it's there. I did, and I will again now, because I, I pride myself on trying to know as much as I can about y'all. And it's a well, shame no, so, when y'all so pull out fastballs. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that, that gets even better. Oh, because yeah, my, explain it. My judge was a guy by the name of Davey McCann. Davey McCann has been throwing the Beast of the Bluegrass for the last eight years. Mm. The Beast of the Bluegrass competition in Kentucky – is how I qualified for the Arnold Amateur because I won that event. Mm. So I won the eighth one. My coach had his heart attack in the middle of the first one. Oh. Yeah. So now, the, okay, so yeah, it's sad, but my coach had his heart attack in front of Davey, and I passed out into the somersault over the bar when he was my judge at the Arnold Amateur World Championship. Oh. I freaked the fuck out. So oh, when I came shit. to – when I came to and I was looking up, the first face I saw was Davey. Like, the first face I saw was his. And he just had this look that said, fuck, I got another one. <laughs> damn. He's like, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> so so you won, you, you won the competition, though, even though, even though yeah, you, was, yeah. you – I yeah, won that he, event in that competition. He won the whole competition. Look Savage at that. life. He was like, all right, so, I won. <laughs> <laughs> I <give up. laughs> it, it was lights out. It was bad. <laughs> Big man fall oh. down hard. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so, so you know what? You know what? I do. I do have a question, and and Hi, and, and since we since we are on there, you know what, people? We are going to speed up, and we are going to talk about. Um, I, I definitely want to get into the Arnold Strongman with you, 
and we will go reverse back people. We will give y'all flashbacks, but I had to go fast forward because this is a question that's been pressing on my mind and I want to know. So I've been trying okay. to find your exact weight. Okay. I've, at the Arnold, they listed you at 6'1", because, because Los and I were having, having debates and going back and forth. So they had you listed at the Arnold at 6'1", 370. When they said that, I was like, what in the fuck is walking in front of us? Like, for him to look like that at 6'1", 370. I was like, what the fuck the is going on? Muscle block. Yo, I, turned, I, turned, yo, listen, I turned and looked at Justin. I was like, yo, what the fuck is that? I said, yeah, he's from West Virginia. That is fucking facts. Like, I'm not from West Virginia. You're not? They, they said you were. First, uh, yeah, but they, they messed up. Fredericksburg is northern Virginia. I'm 40 miles south of D.C. God damn. Oh. And I said fucking West Virginia in the intro. Listen, people, I apologize I was, once again. I was let it go, but then you said it again. I'm like, I got all my teeth. I don't sleep with my parents. Come on, man. <laughs> I wasn't saying it like, no. You know something funny? One of our, so we, we, we had a guest on. Uh, that's funny. He, he lives in the U.K. He's actually, um. He plays George Washington in Hamilton, and he was the genie in Disney's Aladdin over there. He's from West Virginia, so we're, we're cool with, like, you know, we, we ain't got no problem with people from West Virginia. Yeah. I just would say, you country strong. I wasn't even going there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you ain't wrong. I grew up working on horse farms, so yeah. you, you ain't wrong. The country strong's there. <laughs> and you got big-ass hands, too. But yeah. so and then I look online, and then they had you listed from, like, they said that you competed at the Arnold lighter than what you usually walk around. And they said you compete, I think, at like around 335. So then I'm guessing you usually walk around like around 350. So my question becomes, how big is Bobby Thompson? And what were you, pause, and, 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 and how big were you at the Arnold Classic? So they weren't wrong. They sent out an email asking us what our heights were and what our weights were. And initially, I was going to come in at 375 pounds. That was my goal. My coach and I had discussed. Um, but that's wild. I'm going to use a dangerous word for a sickness going around right now. Before it was a thing, I got really sick. And my coach and I think I actually had the coronavirus because I mm -hmm. lost 20 pounds in about 12 days and could Good. not put the weight back on. I wow. could not put the weight back on. So I came into the Arnold at 352 pounds. And then hold on. And then you also Still you also tore. Lot. So besides you coming to the Arnold like that, didn't you have didn't you tear some tendons leading up to it? Like like yeah, you tore so biceps seven, seven yeah, seven weeks out, I uh, completely ruptured my distal bicep tendon. And oh. your distal tendon is the is on your distal tendon is what connects your bicep to your forearm, basically. Mm. Yeah. So I completely ripped that off the bone seven weeks out. Um how do you how do you recover from that and then still, still compete, compete at such yeah. that and and then you competed at a high level? Mm -hmm. So, the night I did it, I, something had happened prior, so my head wasn't in the game already, and then that happened, and it was just kind of like a, it was just kind of like an off oh, fuck moment. And my coach was there with me. It was a late training session. I was working on frame. I was actually carrying a heavier frame than what I would have had to have carried at the Arnold. And when it popped loose, his immediate words were, it's torn, let's ice it, go home, call a surgeon. So I talked to a sports surgeon and I explained to him what my issues were. And I had actually taken like a short, you know what a, you know what a short handled sledgehammer looks like? It's basically what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So I had taken a video of myself the night after Rip tearing it off the bone. And I basically just held it out here and rotated it back and forth. It was about a 16-pound hammer. And that was me testing it, kind of like, okay, how screwed am I? Because that's all right. that tendon's responsible for. And mm -hmm. I showed that to a surgeon who was a sports guy. And he looked at me. He's like, well, you shouldn't be able to do that. He's like, all I'm going to tell you is that if you're going to get it fixed, we got to do it soon. But from what you've explained to me about the Arnold coming up, he's like, I think it would do greater mental damage than this will physical damage for you to miss it. And you're not competing if we do the surgery now. And I, I mean, this was something, this was something I said when I was 16 years old, I'm not coming back unless I'm competing. And mm. this was, this was a life mission and I was here and I'm sorry, it's a bicep. I got two of them. It, they don't do much anyways. If I got one less, fuck it, man. So I basically, I basically 
did a third of the amount of work within that seven weeks that I should have. So I really didn't train at all for seven weeks leading up to the heaviest competition in the world. Mm. Jesus Christ. What a, what a, what a recovered, recovered bicep tendon. But then, you know, yeah. in, in, in that same competition, you had um, uh, Shivlikov, right? Yeah. Mikhail Shivlikov. He, yep. like, he like had did, – was his ankle broken? Was it fractured? What the fuck was going on? So it Whatever it was, it looked disgusting. So and he I was deadlifting and doing all kind of crazy shit. So that's angry Russian. That's all that is. Like, that's, that's, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> it's, no, so he actually he – was, he was walking around backstage – and they had a ramp set up for us to load stones onto a barrel to warm up. And it was surrounded by pads. So he stepped over the pad, didn't see the ramp that was elevated about 12 inches off the ground, and half his foot landed on, half didn't, and he just rolled that sucker. Um, oh. I walked over to the table to get my foot wrapped up. Right at the same time, he came over, and they took his shoe off, and it looked like a water balloon. They and showed it, and it was, it was disgusting. It was brutal. I, he posted something on Instagram a while back. I think he had some torn ligaments, but he'll, he'll be back. Like, he's... Well, he was just deadlifting. Like, yeah. You saw him. He was just... Yeah. At him. It was him and Terry Hollis at the, at the... They were having a masses competition. They were, they were deadlifting. They attempted 430 kilos. What was that? 900 and... Uh, 430 is right under 1,000. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. And it's the masses because, what, are they over 40? I think so. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. Well, the competition that when Bobby that old when Bobby Bobby competed at the North American Giants Live 2019, and then a man named Mark Felix took second uh-huh. in that competition. And Mark Felix is fucking 54 years old. I've heard so about Mark Felix. Mark Mark Felix took third. I don't think he took second. Oh, he took third. Excuse me. I'm sorry because about that. He knocked me off the podium by half a point. Oh yes, mm. yes, yes. Yep. Yeah, that is what this says right here. I apologize for that, people. That's okay. Oh no, that's it. It stings a little bit. I got that one. <laughs> so, got that one. Yeah, thirty nine point five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because of this bicep, I had had issues with this bicep for four years or so, mm. and because of that, I couldn't train Atlas stones. Because if I did, then I couldn't move this arm for two, three weeks. So, and that's when the surgeon also said, he's like, well, it sounds like you had just been slowly tearing that tendon for so long. And the only reason Mark just knocked me off the platform is because I couldn't load the last Atlas stone. Um, so it's, yeah, it's that, that was, that was a rough day. Damn. That was a rough day. You, so how do you, so I, so like, I remember when I was playing when I was playing college football, I got hurt my senior year, and I knew that that was it. Like, I wasn't playing after that. So yeah. it was kind of like, I got to go balls to the wall. So I remember I, all I did was my kneecap went in and out. Nothing crazy, nothing ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And I, I was able to come back the next week, but I had to come back in this ridiculous fucking brace. And I was just out there, and it was just, we were just living crazy. But it wasn't anything extensive. When I hear about the injuries that y'all face, that y'all just fight through. Yep. What the, what the? <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? That's like, what, that's what like, like no, it's no, it's not <laughs> even that. It's how do you? <laughs> no, besides that, but it's like how do you, how do you get to a point that you were just so cool with that much pain? Like, like when I work out, right? When I work out, I'll, I'll listen to like podcasts. I'll sometimes like, like you know, I listen to um, like 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 I love listening to the Big Loss podcast, but I listen to other shit as well, mm-hmm. and then like. You know, I listen to like a David Goggins and shit like that. And like, you know, when the shit starts to hurt, I'm like, oh, you know, you guys stop being a bitch and all this other kind of shit. But then it's kind of like when it comes down to it, and I think, and I don't like, I literally think about like, well, how do these motherfuckers get so big and strong and they just so cool with, cool with this much amount of pain? Like, what the fuck? Like, how did you become married to pain like this? I want to know. Because like, even so, when you were like, Blows, did you like pain during training? Like, I no. didn't, like, I was cool with it because I knew it would help me. But then there was like certain yeah. times like, it was like, no, ah, don't. I don't want to. It was like, when that man came to running and shit, it was like, ah, fuck out of here. I don't and want to, to your that. point, to your point, we never had to do anything, like, super strenuous. And, I mean, football is strenuous, but in terms of, like, yeah. lifting heavy weights and doing all this, you know, heavy strongman competition. So how do you even – I can't even, even say I lifted heavy around him. All I did was do, like, a four, like, 20 bench and, like, a five-something squat. Like, what is that to him? Like, warm-up? Like, it's like, ah, that's cute. 
<laughs> so you're stronger you're than asking, average. It was stronger than the average. It, it sounds like you're asking a question based on physical ability that is backed by more. Unfortunately, it's it's supported by philosophy. If you yes, yes, that's what I want to get it, into. It, it, it's it's all based on it's making a decision. Um, and as, as a young man, well, I'm 27. I'm not, I feel old. I'm not that old, but. Oh, you're 27? Yeah. Oh, snap. We all the same age. We're not playing. <laughs> no, but, um. He's a it's... much bigger 27 than I am, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, That's a lot of venison succumb... right there. I, I follow one life concept. And that is that everything we experience is building us towards one moment that will require everything we've ever done in life to succeed in that single moment. Hmm. So it's not a matter of overcoming the pain. I mean, it's what is pain? Pain is your body telling you that, hey, something, something's wrong. That's hmm. all it is. It's not tell, pain doesn't tell you to stop. It doesn't. It says something is wrong right now. Okay, I understand something is wrong, but there's something I have to do. Right. Now, when you need to stop, a tendon rips off the bone or you pass out. That is mm. one key concept that people don't mm. realize that pain is, is in, pain is not a stop. It's not a stop sign. All it is is saying, hey, we're redlining. Some, some, this may not be good. Okay, cool. This isn't good, but I have it. I have something to do. I like that. Um, and I there's like also that. a very real concept that everybody forgets. You'll puke before you pass out, and you will pass out before you die. Listen, Los, that's a clip. Bar. Yeah, it is. That's it a, is. It is. That's a whole it bar. Is. That's it a is. bar, yo. You know, I need that to. Is, that's like that's that's, that's, that's tapping into that that mamba mentality. R. P. Kobe, of course. But um, but that's tapping into that is is, is when the pain comes up on your brain like think about your whole body as a computer and then the brain pain comes up as a pop-up you're like x out <laughs> I'm, I'm doing something here yeah. you know so it's kind of bypassing that 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 limit that limit uh warning you know yeah well and the best part is when you've experienced that much pain when somebody has hurt that bad it's like a bookmark it's like okay this hurt that bad i can go a little bit farther next time mm. You, you become, the amount of surgeries. You, Oops, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. You, you begin to understand. This is pain. I've hurt worse than this. This is okay. Okay, I haven't hurt this bad before, but I'm still okay. But then it just it sets that bookmark in in red in that line a little bit further each time. So Look at like hard. like you know what I think about think about when I, when I think about pain, especially now. You know, um, I got to give a shout out to the big homie, the Undertaker. You know, shout out to you for retiring. Uh, shout out to the big homie. But I think about the amount of injuries that he had and the surgeries that he had. And then he still kept going. You know what I mean? Even before right now where he was kind of like really slow. But you think about even like 10 years ago, the amount of pain that he was just walking around in. And it's just like you said. And then he kind of talks about the same way, kind of like, that's eh, something that you do. You kind of just do what you got to do. Like he was back there. Yeah, he was wrestling with a broken orbital bone. Like it was like they did the JJ to his face, D. And he was still out there wrestling. Like, he was still going after the surgery. You see what I'm saying? It's crazy. So, like, like, it, you know, to me, it's always been, like, pain is something that's always been, like, fascinating to me in the sense of just kind of, like, you know, what you can do with it and really how powerful it is. Like, when you really think about it, like, for me personally, like, like I think I think of fucked up shit sometimes. It's kind of like, imagine if you got fucking captured. You know what I'm saying? And like, obviously paint. Like, like, think about, like, because, like, have you ever, like, been doing something and you just kind of like, oh, shit, if I got captured, this is, if they do this, I'm fucked. Like, like yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like, you start rubbing styrofoam together. You're like, God damn, you won't even have to fucking touch me. Just fucking do that. Like, motherfucker, what do you want? Like, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that so fucking, I fucking much. Oh, Yo, it, it's skeeving me out right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like like or like or like um what they said um they said that they i'm not gonna say who but they said that um when people were getting interrogated they were playing like sesame street and spongebob for them on repeat <laughs> like theme songs like, like that was, that was i love crazy. you 
Oh, they just kept playing crazy. parties. I love you. That's fucking. I think that's amazing. Whoever was doing, I think that's great. Like, that's I, I think it's that's, fucking hilarious. That's, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, back on topic. Back on topic. Back on topic. <laughs> but um, besides, because, no, because your pain is so fascinating. But um, speaking of that, leading up to you know, leading up to the Arnold Classic. So you're going through all that. What was it like when you got like when when you got to the week of the competition? What were you feeling? What were you thinking? Like, what was really going through your head? Like, matter of fact, what was going through your head like two weeks out from the competition? Like, two weeks out, when um, you were kind of like, I'm almost right there, but I'm like, not there yet. Kind of getting my last heavy sets in. What do you think? Oh, no. There, there was no getting my last heavy sets in. Are you Dude, going I was, all the way up? I was, I was done seven weeks out. Mm. Oh, so because my just, bicep. So you Dude, just kind of like, rested. Was, yeah. I did so I did some deadlifts because those really didn't hurt too bad. But no, like there was no heavy sets, man. Like I was doing maybe a third of the work I should have been, or well, had I been healthy. But I was, dude. This is the Arnold was bittersweet for me, mm-hmm. um, because of the injury, but because of the week before I tore my bicep, we uh, we we very surprised. Well. Not surprisingly, but we lost my uncle very quickly. Um, and that was one of those we knew he was going to pass, but they were saying that, hey, like he's going to have two to three more good years in him before things get rough. And then I get a phone call from my dad saying, you got to call your uncle in an hour to say goodbye. And that was the week before I tore my bicep. And the three of us, at one, there were, there was a two year period where the three of us all lived together. Um, my, my parents split. It was a nasty divorce. And very shortly after that, my aunt left my uncles. Like, it was it was bad. So the three of us kind of all tied up together and kind of kept the shit moving. Mm. And then it was one of those, like, hey, like, he was supposed to be at the Arnold. I mean, he was, you know, he was one of two men in this world that I try and shape myself after. And then right. eight weeks out of the show, he's supposed to be there. Hey, you got to say goodbye over the phone. And he was so bad that I don't – he knew I was talking, but that he was he was already gone at that point. Right. So, the, the eight weeks leading up to it, man, like, no, I was not a good place. Yeah, like, I'm about to say, because that's, that's it's, dark. It's, it's, an, it's an achievement, but, man, like, it was not – I definitely was not me. So, how were you able to, to kind of um, – I know you said before, like, you, you always looked up to – going and competing in the Arnold. So you're like, I'm you driven, you were driven on that part. So how was it able to not only lose, lose your uncle and come over an injury, but still kind of muster through all of that to even compete that day? (sighs) I got to give it to the people I had around me. I do. Um, Honestly, as far as mustering it up and getting there, I think I was – I think once I got there and I clicked on autopilot, mm-hmm. like, I was good. Like, then there, there's a realm I can step into. It's mechanical. I understand how this goes. This is my world. But if I didn't have – like, I – for instance, I was I was at the gym when I said goodbye on the phone. Like, mm-hmm. I had to step out of a workout and say goodbye. And I walked back in, and my coach was standing right there. And, and he knew what was going on. He gave me a hug and said, hey, we got to keep moving. Um, and then my dad was on with me 24 seven. It, it took, there was a group of, I would say five people that got me to Ohio. If those five people had not been with me, I wouldn't have gone to Ohio. Mm. Like it was, it would have been my first competition. He was there to watch. I mean, and then when I tore my bicep, like I had the moment of like, fuck, like it was only about 15 minutes, but the moment of, am I supposed to do this? Like, do I even want this at this point? Like, it's, you know, it was, and then it was, of course, amidst the corona situation. So the funeral was was put off, was postponed. There was no mm. funeral. So it just, I did not get myself there. I was gotten there. Mm. I'm mm. probably one of the luckiest guys alive. And that, to your point, because I've seen, a, a, I forgot who it was. Um, there, some people, somebody was talking about this, and it's kind of like whenever something happens in your life, an injury or someone passing, is it 
is it God testing you or God trying to uh, show you signs to quit? So it's up to you whether you take it, you know, as a, is it time to quit or is it time to push even further? You know, so it sounds like you push even further and you, and you, um, you know, you were able to reconcile and kind of, you know, come to your own thoughts to compete. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the big mental push. Um, I have always been, up until those, I, I remember those exact 15 minutes where I was questioning, is this what I want or am I, do I even want this anymore? But I've always been that guy. It's everything's a challenge. There is no, tell me I can't, I'm going to do it. Please don't do this. Or I'm going to die trying one or the other. Like, don't tell me I can't. Um, when, you know, you know, it's the chips are down. Well, I like to eat chips. So pass the fucking bag. Let's get this shit done. But it's <laughs> ah, yes, I respect so. you, big homie. Yeah, but I like it, it was, it, it was hard. I don't know. I was on autopilot. Like I said, once I got there, I was good. But getting there, man, like I'm lucky. I had the people in my corner that I did. Mm. Mm. I definitely, mm. I definitely respect that. I definitely respect that. That's a, that's a, um, that's kind of heavy, and that's kind of, and it's definitely, it's definitely deep. Um, so, where, where you want to take, where you want to take this, Dean? You want to go to? So, I do, I, I do, I do want to ask a question though about his training, because there's okay. an event that happens at the Arnold Strongman Classic, uh, that's called the Wheel of Pain. Uh, the uh, Wheel okay. of the, the Wheel of Pain is this monstrous contraption, and it comes from the Barbarian. Uh, Conan the Barbarian. Yep. Yeah. Is that where they put so, like a push? They push it. Yes, yep. yes, okay. and it's this. How how large is it? It's it it's, has like it's it's big. It's like twenty tons. Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to say if I, I wanted to say something like that, but I didn't want to sound off. But yeah, they and then they basically it's this huge contraption, and they have to they have to push it. They have to either use their hands or y'all. Oh, y'all weren't allowed to use your shoulders this year. They were allowed to use them so last we can, year. We can go chest up. Like we can yep. hook our arms under and go chest up, but we can't put our head under. under it. Yep. So they either had to do that, or they or they could just continuously push it. So how did you train for an event that was twenty two ton in total? Twenty so, ton in total. We were we were doing things like truck pushes, uh, heavy sled pushes. We were using yokes, dropping the yoke height down so we could put our hands on the crossbar and push. But that was an event that bit me in the ass hard. Because, again, my big toe – so I told you I mentioned foot surgeries, but my big toes are fused at the joint. So my mm. big toes do not move up. They do not move down. It's not mm. one of those, like, I can't flex it. It's one of those, if you grab it with your hand and shake it, it doesn't move. Mm. So it's – that was a rough event, training for it even so, because I have to turn my feet outwards, which puts a lot of pressure on my knees, works its way up to my hips. Um so as far as training for it, we just simulated being out extended with our hands out in front of us and our legs behind us driving forward. But it, that was that was a rough one. That's not one I'm looking forward to going back to. You know what's <laughs> funny? You know you know what's crazy is because when you talk about so like when I was watching you do it, I was looking at it and I was like, damn, he's got some good technique. And the reason I was thinking you had good technique and you were going on your end steps is because I played football and then I was a college offensive lineman at the time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in steps on the run game was my shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like that's where I got my power from. That's how I got to finish these motherfuckers. So when I saw you doing that with the, with the push, I was like, yo, my man got some, all right. I was like, I was like kind of respecting it, but now I was kind of like, you know, hearing why you were doing it and the pain it was causing, it was interesting. Kind of proved that I had no idea what the fuck I was talking about, people. And this is what to bring these people on to have a conversation. <laughs> you're not wrong because you're talking about the end step, and what you're doing with that is you're putting more surface area against the ground to push off of, which mm-hmm. isn't wrong. However, in this particular case, it's not efficient because you. if you look at the wheels, the barrels that it that it rotates on, inside of those barrels, there's individual chambers that are full of mm. sand. So your first 12 inches feel great. You're like, wow, I'm moving. And then the Mm -hmm. sand catches. But the issue is, is if you start to slow down or if your pace changes, that sand will shift backwards. Mm -hmm. So that's where being able to tighten up and be short and choppy and maintain a constant speed 
is that's where that really pays off. Ah, I see what you mean. So you kind of uh, you keep just saying kind of like keep moving and rather than sitting and going against you. Exactly. Oh, I can I I can stand clear of that though. So it basically yeah. was like a big pirate ship, and they have like these like like levers almost and you just kind of just push hold it on in a if you give me if you give me sharing capabilities i can show the people what the wheel of pain looks <laughs> like they're gonna think it's a torture device <laughs> no 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 that's from the movie conan the barbarian the original that's exactly what it was ah in the movie the people having to turn it was it was they were slaves they were being tortured they were prisoners mm. so that yes that's sense. what it's modeled after a, a torture device. This thing is. Oh, so is, look at that. Uh, yeah. I, I, that was, um, you gave me the sharing capabilities. I mean, I, I didn't think it was that serious. You pretty just explained it for us. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Never mind. I was going to show it. I was going to get my young Jamie on. No, it's okay. It's all right. We appreciate it, Joe. Appreciate the attempt. Um, Fuck off. Was, uh, that Joe Rogan, we, was that a Joe Rogan little phrase there? Get my Jamie yes, on it? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, well done. Well done. Well done, well done. <laughs> but you know what though i do need to i know we're i know i know we're going to be wrapping this up soon and i do need to get to something before we do that so i'm still going to need you to give me sharing capabilities los because it is going to be talking about a instagram post that mr bobby had put up about leaving his apartment and i know you haven't seen it yet los and i want to bring it up because it's a very interesting conversation in whole <laughs> i would like to have yep. All right, you're good to go. I am good to go, you say, my man. All right, let me just go to his Instagram. Instagram. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to go here to what we call Zoom, people. And then we're going to hit this little button called Share. Why can't I share, Los? I mean, you should be able to. Ah, there we go. It was right there. My bad. All right. So listen, people, Bobby had put a post up about five days ago, and it says, and I'm going to read it for the people, you know, first apartment, one best friend, one child, one almost gunfight, one brother, one dead body, one bad heartbreak, one too many drunk nights, two girlfriends, one too many sunrises on the balcony after late nights at work, two snowstorms, and how do you only get two, um, two cars, mm -hmm. Six years of figuring out exactly who I was, how great I had, um, how great I had lived with my best friend, and undoubtedly the environment I needed to create the athlete and man I've become. It was a blast. At Jake, I am us prime, but it was onward to greater adventures. Hashtag moving out, but not apart. Can we talk about this full? Sounds like thing, a haiku, right? <laughs> right? But it all this happened. So can we, can we break this down for the people? Sure. Ask away. All right. So let's just, let's, 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 let's ease the people into it. So I let's talk about this. The dead body. Hold on first. Right. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get there, before we get there, I get enough of that all day. Just give me a second. Let's, <laughs> let's talk, let's do something else for a hot second. Um, okay. Let's talk about the, before, before we get to the dead bodies, let's talk about the almost gunfight. Okay. Right. That like ties into the dead body. All right, well then let's let's get it all in one. There, there ain't no thing but a chicken wang. So, right. so talk about that player. So, we had been living there for about a year. We being my best friend, also my, uh, you know, I call him my brother. Um, and it was the first year there. That apartment, you can tell by how beat up the door is. It ain't in the best part of town. Um, <laughs> so that being said, we had gotten home from bouncing that night. Uh, my girlfriend at the time was living with us. We were, I was laying in bed with her. My roommate was, my best friend was in his bed and we heard five or six gunshots right outside. Um, I rolled over and covered her knowing right away what it was and realized she was okay. We're good. I stick my head out in the hallway and my Jake is standing right there and he's looking at me and we hear somebody screaming for help. Um, so I looked at Jake and I said, put some clothes on, grab your gun. And we both went downstairs. That's the fuck I'm talking about. That Second Amendment shit. Yeah, yeah. talk that oh, shit, no, no. Bobby. Yeah. Talk that shit, Bobby. Talk so, that yeah. shit. Let's I, go. I, 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 can can I you let him talk to We were not looking to shoot anybody. We were looking to help the guy screaming. 
But yeah, right. th that's what I mean. Respect yeah. to the second respect. You couldn't do that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to wait for other people. You sometimes you no. gotta take action to your own hand. Respect that. So we go running outside. We get or we get down there. We're looking around and we can smell, still smell gunpowder in there. It smelled like you were shooting cheap rounds. Um, and we look down the sidewalk, and about 100 yards away, there's somebody limping. And I was like, okay. Well, my roommate goes to take off after him. I reach out and grab him. I'm like, wait, because we already heard sirens coming. And it's like, okay, cops are already coming. you got two big old half-naked white boys standing out front, both armed, and some guy limping away. I don't want to be there he's not gonna die yeah right, so right. i grabbed my room like, no dude we, let's he's fine he's he's talking he's upright we need to walk away right. so again he didn't want to I, I love the man to death but he was just thinking i gotta help that guy well, that guy's still walking he's good if he got shot it's not vital right. um so we go to head back in we're walking through the breezeway and we look down the steps and there's another it's kind of like we're we come down steps in the breezeway we're ground level. We see the guy limping. We turn around. There's another set of steps that go down. We look down those steps, and there's a guy laying on his back down there. And he's not responsive, so we go hauling ass down the steps. I turn around and start doing chest com – I, I turn around and give Jake my gun and start doing chest compressions. And as I'm doing chest compressions, I start noticing some stuff. Like, he's got thick cotton gloves on with a pair of brass knuckles. He had a bandana over the lower half of his face that I had moved when I was trying to find a pulse. And as I'm doing chest compressions, I start realizing that this guy's brains are splattered on the back on the uh, the wall in front of me. He's missing the back half of his head. And it's kind of like, wow. And then I start counting shells on the ground, and there's five or six shells down there. So uh, whoever, whatever happened, which it turned out it was a drug deal gone bad. It made national news. Um but whatever he did to somebody, somebody laid down rounds and they landed on target. But mm. at that point in time, I saw sirens coming up the hill and I turned around yelling at my roommate, take the guns back in the house. Don't be here with guns when the cops get here. Like we're, we're armed. This guy's dead. This obviously I figured out he was dead, but by Virginia law, if you start doing CPR, you cannot stop until a medical professional or emergency personnel says stop. So I'm stuck doing CPR on this guy missing the back half of his head, knowing it's useless. Um, and then my roommate runs back up the stairs, puts the guns away. One of the cops comes down the steps and draws on me. And I'm looking up at him saying, look, this is useless. I can't stop, though, until you tell me to. Luckily enough, I knew the cop from working, working at bars for so long. Um, and he said, okay, man, go ahead and stop. And then I walk back up the stairs, wash the blood off my hands, uh, my girlfriend looked at me and asked if I was okay. I looked at her and smiled and said, yes, dear, nothing's wrong. And that was then. What the was your interaction? So what happened with the cop? Like, he just, did you have, like, a deeper interaction after that? Like, what happened? Like, what kind of conversation happened? So was just, that was problem. actually kind of cool. So he came into the bar, and the next night, he came into the bar the next night and started talking to me. And he, what, what, what did he say? He said something stupid. He gave me a deep down dirty talk about staying in my apartment and God, what did he, it wasn't politically correct. I can't remember for the life of me what he said that night. Right, I was still right. kind of thrown off, but it wasn't very politically correct. Something to the effect of he would never seen somebody so hard, trying so hard to bring somebody back to life that was missing the brain or something like that. Right. It was, yeah. So that's the almost gunfight and that's the dead body. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, and no, no, we did not move after that. <laughs> that is that is crazy. I'm just I'm just like, like wow, that's 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 very interesting. That is a very interesting uh, story with that one. One other thing, I want to know about the two snowstorms. Like, why only two? Like, I'm confused. One more time, the two what? The two snowstorms? Like, just the two? That's it? <laughs> All right. So I don't count anything that doesn't shut down the government as a snowstorm. <laughs> if I still got to go to work, it ain't a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So he's, okay. So he's only calling like the big nor'easters. Those, those are the <laughs> yeah. little ones. Nah, yeah, but, they don't like, even shut down anything for nor'easters. It'd be whatever for those. <laughs> At least up here in upstate New York, they don't be giving a fuck. Well, yeah. Um, the, yeah. There are no, there are no snowstorms in upstate New York. There's just snow all the time. So, 
Right. Yeah, everybody changes. But then once you, you kind of get used to it, it's really not that bad, to be honest. It's really, it's, it's I like snow. I mean, I don't like heat. I'm well insulated as is, so. It's. <laughs> Listen, Bobby, what is it What is it that we can expect to see from you after we come from this pandemic COVID hell? What can you expect mm-hmm. to see from me? That's a good question. Man, that is a good question. Um, we don't we don't know when we're gonna escape. We don't know what the fuck is going on. So I can tell you that um, as far as strongman goes, I'm I'm out hunting heads. I, I got some guys I'm looking to knock off. Um, I like that the kill bill No, I, like I got that. some. I got my coach and I have plans for at some point in time the American Log Press World Record, or excuse me, the American Log Press Record. Maybe Ooh, you heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, we, if we can tie it together, we got plans for that. Um, I want to get back to the Arnold, but we don't know how that's going to go. There are no special invites, so we don't know how they're going to qualify everybody. And it's just keep doing my thing, dude. I'm, I'm in this till the wheels fall off. I'm going to go until something breaks and I can't fix it. And when I can't fix it, I'm going on to my next adventure. Mm. I listen. I like that, that is uh, that is that is fucking dope. That is fucking powerful. Listen mm-hmm. here, people. This is black of the fucking berry. Listen, I am Dean. That over there is a madman, Lowe's. That you over there man. is the <laughs> the junior strong man. That right there is the man, his motherfucking self, Bobby motherfucking Thompson, and you can follow him. At, at Bobby underscore Thompson underscore pro strong man for all of his philosophical endeavors. Listen, Bobby, I appreciate you for coming over here to the Berry Gang Lane and banging with us. We definitely want to have you on again, you know, later date to kind of talk some more shit because we definitely want to get into a whole bunch more, uh, especially like, you know, you know, uh, as things progress with you. Uh, do you want to say anything for the people here? Hey, guys, keep tuning in to Black of the Bear, the Sweet of the Juice. And, guys, let me know when you want me back. I'm coming hard and fast. Oh, we appreciate it. Try it. Big homie. Yeah, Once again, this is Dean. That is Lowe's. That is Bobby Thompson. This is BTB. We appreciate y'all. We are out. That's fine. Thank you, son. We appreciate that. That was, that was, yeah. that was some really good stuff. That was a great interview. We had some fun yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. Look, guys, thanks for having me. It was good meeting y'all, good chatting with you. Hopefully, when this is all cleared up, I can do some other cool stuff and we can get back on and talk. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. We're I definitely, like that. So one so, thing yeah. that, uh huh. So one I was thing. Say, make sure you guys tell me where you where you stream off of, so I can point people in the right direction. Oh, we stream okay. off everything. It's gonna be, okay. but, but we're definitely gonna send it to you. But we're on everything: YouTube, Spotify. Um, if you have Apple Podcasts, we're on that. If you on Google Podcasts, we're on that. We on Google Podcasts, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're on Google Podcasts. Uh, we're on everything. We're not on SoundCloud no more, though, because that was just kind of like... No, no, no. no. My news. So but, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. you know what, though? You know what, though? We do. Um, we are doing something. Um, like, so we, we, we've we met this bro. We start, we're going to do, like, a like a cooking series with him. And I'm definitely going to be talking to Lopes. We're going to definitely, since you're in America, hopefully, like, you know, the same way you see, like, Brian Shaw and them, like, kind of meeting up and do kind of cool videos, maybe we can kind of meet up, come down into West Virginia. Maybe you could put us through the fucking trenches. I mean, see, I was for you, DC. Sorry, my DMV. bad. DMV. Going the, to the DMV. Listen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> going down in, you know, we go down into DC. You can mm-hmm. focus, put us through the trenches. Maybe we can, like, you know, go to a good restaurant, eat some food, and trying to, like, you know, kind of like follow your diet or like, like, eat what one of your, like, you know, maybe two of your meals or something stupid like that, just to show like how ridiculous it is. Because I like to eat, but the amount of food y'all got to eat is ridiculous to me. <laughs> ah, man, I'm down. Let me, let me know when. Let me know when y'all in the area. We'll make it happen. Oh, perfect. Bye. Bye.